So I'm originally from Berlin, Maryland, and in Berlin, everybody was, you know, we just didn't believe that we were actually going to make it out of there. There were a few that did, but um, we all just seemed like we were just going to always live in Berlin. You know, we were always going to be that hometown grown, um, everybody knows everybody type thing. But then, you know, God moved us into a different direction and he made us quickly. <laughs> we had been there for all of our lives, my husband and I, uh, gosh, we had been married for almost 20 some years before God told us that we had to move from Berlin and move to Salisbury. Um, our ministry was already here, but God just had a whole, I mean, like when I tell you, not just a pivot and turn, an entire shift. So once we got here um, in Salisbury, we saw the blessings of the Lord for so many different reasons. It wasn't just about, um, you know, following a ministry. God had things here that we needed to do. And that is something that I've been grateful for. Not that I don't miss Berlin because uh, my mom and my grandmother are still there. But where we are now, I know that God has us here for a particular reason. Things have elevated. Our life has changed dramatically. Um, I'm just seeing increase after increase after increase. Um, I am now walking into some different things for my life, and for that, I am truly grateful. So, I was raised by my grandparents. Um, my grandmother and my grandfather, unfortunately, uh, were alcoholics. And so, um, not that we lived a rough life because we were definitely taken care of, but, um, it was still hard because me and my sister, um, we had to witness domestic violence with my mom. So, and she left us to go be with that same man. So we are domestic violence survivors. Um, so hard to talk about sometimes, you know, sometimes we, it's okay, it's easy. But there are all times like at this moment now that I have to sit down and think about what my mom had to go through um, for like almost 20 years. And so she had a, our baby sister is from that particular relationship. Um, he just recently died during COVID. So I had no feelings when he passed on. It meant nothing to me, but it meant something to my sister. And um, I watched the pain in my mom's eyes, and um, just talk. It was just, just it's, that was just a tough situation, you know. But um, I carried that into my marriage, into my friendships, my relationships, because I didn't know what true love was. So <clears throat> all I knew was rejection and um, not being wanted, and. Um, Nobody really, you know, thinking of me as being somebody that was an important person in their life. So um, I felt unworthy. I felt all of those things. But, um, you know, so in my relationships, I felt that and I reacted to that. So in my marriage, it became really kind of bad. So it took a while. I mean, had we not found Christ alone, I know that we would not have been where we are today. So, yeah, I had to really, I'm not the person that I was raised to be. And they never really raised me to be anyone, you know what I mean? They were just giving me a life, Does that, if that makes sense. But, um, and I didn't know what I wanted to be until one day, I think my mom was a secretary or something. And I kind of knew that's what I was going to go into. I knew I was going to go into that field of being a secretary. So I took, you know, business classes in school and this, that, and the third. But... And I am now today, 30 years in, <laughs> um, I've been in the medical field for that long. Um, so, um, and I do a fine job at it. I do know that I'm, I'm, you know, I'm very good with people. I'm very, very, very good with people. And I do know that, but I didn't know that in the past. So I fought that and I didn't think anybody would ever want to be around me. You know what I mean? I never would have thought anybody wanted to hear anything that came out of my mouth you know what I mean but God had a plan <laughs> he has an amazing plan which you know I'm still working through but um yeah I had a I had a whole shift when like I said when I moved from out of Berlin 
in the Salisbury, I saw where the shift started happening. So my voice was being used more, um, you know, I'm a minister. Uh, so I was used at church and everything. I was a head usher uh, or usher, however you want to say it. <laughs> um, so yeah, my life, you know, I, I wasn't, you know, I hate to even say I wasn't raised to be anything because that's not really what I meant. But, you know, I just had no career goal. You know what I mean? So, but um, yeah, so here I am today, a woman of worth and value. So, um, watching my mom go through what she went through and, and not her not knowing her real worth um, was hard for me and I, and I didn't quite understand it. So that, and that, that I never had a real representation of what it really meant to be a woman of worth, okay? So then I got into this relationship with this cat named Kevin, who is now my husband and, <laughs> and the father of my babies. <laughs> and it was so crazy. It was volatile. It was crazy. It was just messy all the time. But that was because I didn't know who I was. And he didn't really know who he was. So, you know, we're still going through this transition. And so then I come into um, this church called New Beginnings Covenant Ministries with Bishop Darrell Butts and First Lady Michelle. And I have never seen a love like that in all my life. I didn't know what that even entitled. You know, I never knew what it was to have a genuinely have someone love you unconditionally, no matter what you what your past was or what you looked like or the mistakes that you made or whatever you failed at. You know, I never, ever would have, I've never had, never experienced a love like that. Not even in my marriage, you know, honestly. And so, I mean, we had our children and everything. I mean, that's what, you know, we had the flow. We rolled with the marriage thing. But, you know, when I, when I finally realized my worth through this powerful thing called agape love that changed my life forever, and then I ended up becoming a minister and I realized, you know, I was ushering and everything and I loved it. Oh my gosh, I loved it so much. Um, but when I became a minister, I realized that there was something different, that you needed to meet a different need of the people. So that changed my life too because I knew that I loved people so much and, but yet I still didn't understand quite the quality and the power of love. You know what I mean? Even though it changed my life, I still was going through some things and I didn't quite couldn't get a grip get a grasp of it that's the word a grasp of it so then one day I was at home and um, I, I had stopped working for a while because um, I don't even remember what had happened I, it was something that was going on probably with my oldest daughter and I just ended up staying at home and I woke up one morning and that song walking by Mary Mary Remember that song, Walk In by Mary Mary? Okay, so that was on and, and, and I heard clear as a bell, I mean just clear, you're gonna be writing about this. I said writing. And the Lord gave me walking in your woman. And I'm going, walking in your woman, like what? What in the world? <laughs> you know, walking in your woman, God, what is that? So I had started um, um, blogging. I started blogging I had a whole blog called walking in your woman and the next thing I know I mean it was just going crazy like people were like when is the next one and you know when are you gonna be doing this and what's happening and but it all came from me not knowing my worth and God showing me what my worth was and watching my mom not knowing her worth um, and it just turned my life around you know I, I started understanding that we as women are gems. Not only are we gems, we're so multifaceted, it's incredible. We can do things, you know, we can have babies <laughs> and we can do things. <laughs> we create, we nurture, we, we build. We build our marriages, we build our husbands, we build ourselves. We can build and create, you know, anything we want. But don't lose sight of your worth because it really is important 
God gave us, made us woman for a reason. So with that, that's why I am walking in your woman, the founder. So um, yeah, my whole life, like I said, I didn't really know who I was, but when God shifted me into walking in my woman and understanding the reason why I am a woman, it changed my life forever. So my why is because I have two daughters and they are looking at me and I did not understand that for a long time, but I refused to allow them to be in a position that they did not know their worth. So every day I tell them how beautiful they are when I get a chance to talk to them anyway. <laughs> Or I tell them how much I love them or how proud I am I am of them or because I never had that growing up. I I never had that growing up. So the love factor, I, I didn't even that's why I said I didn't know what love was. Um my why is to make sure that my daughters absolutely know their worth and how important they are and I don't ever want them to forget the beauty that they hold within within. And when it comes out that they are actually going to bring more beauty to themselves or to that next person or to their own children or to their husband. I want them to always walk beautiful, be beautiful, remember they're beautiful, know that beauty is their portion. And um, I, I didn't have that. I, did, I didn't think I was beautiful. I didn't think... There were, I didn't think I had any class. I didn't think I had any style. Well, at one time, I probably did not. But um, as hard as I fought, um, I still it still takes me some time, you know, still today, to remember that I am beautiful. Not only am I beautiful, man, I am glowing. <laughs> you know, I am walking in some things. I'm walking in, my, walking in my woman. I mean, you know, I'm walking in some things that I never would have thought that I'd be, you know, walking into, I mean, even sitting here in front of my son doing this is just like amazing to me, you know, like just the, this is, this is valuable to me. This is something that I, that I will never forget. And I will hold and cherish deeply because God has placed me in positions in front of women to let them know you are beautiful. You are amazing. And not only are you beautiful and amazing, but you are worth it all. And um, my accomplishments, what I want to accomplish is that women will be so strong and so fearless that they will be able to accomplish anything, anytime, for any reason, for whatever purpose that they have. And that will nothing will hold them back. Because I held my own self back from rejection. I held my own self back from unbelief. Um, I just want women to believe that they are worth it all. That is so important to me. That you were made a woman for such a such a most amazing reason. God literally thought of you specifically so that you would know that you are His absolute gem. You're you're just you know how they say that you are the apple of His eye. Listen, you are His blossom. And you are blossoming every single day. And you not only are you blossoming, but your family is blossoming, your children are blossoming, your you, you just everything around you just grows. And if it withers and dies, then it no longer is supposed to be there. And it's just time to move forward. Yeah. Um, so what traumatized me was the day that I was talking to my mom on the phone and she said clearly to me that if she knew, um, but she knew now that we would never be here. So, which means she would have aborted us, but God had a plan and, um, it traumatized me for days. So enters rejection, low self-esteem low self-worth, no worth, <laughs> enters all those things. Um, and then I end up, you know, walking 
in this place of comparing myself with others and with my mom, with that person as their daughter and, you know, why, you know, and my two sisters, my, I, had, I had my one sister at the time and then, um, then came my baby sister, God bless her soul, because she, she was like, you know, the happiest little baby and, um, but we just lived in such a life of violence, um, with the domestic violence and everything was just, and that was her father. Um, so, but she came out to be absolutely amazing as well as my middle sister. They're absolutely amazing. And, you know, I still have times when I compare myself to them as being the better, but we all have a, a just a certain gem about our, ourselves. We're all differently, um, we walk in different qualities and, and, and they're beautiful all together as us, as being sisters. So, um, I just, I think that was the thing that traumatized me the most was when my mom said that. And now, granted, God has graced us with a relationship that is just beyond what I could have imagined. Um, she's an amazing mother. I just, I adore her. I love her so much. Um, she would do anything for you. She just has things that she's still working through, you know what I mean? Because of everything she's been through. So that is another part of my why to make sure that my mom knows her worth. Yeah, so my happiest moment was the day that I found out I was pregnant. So we had been trying for like seven years and we did not know that we, I mean, we literally thought we couldn't have any kids, like literally, like, geez. We thought we could not have kids. Um, and then the day we found out that we were pregnant, we were like, oh my God, are you kidding me? So that was Katrina. That was our first baby girl. And then came Kirsten. Oh my God. She was an emergency C-section, right? <laughs> she still is today. Okay. Everything's an emergency. So, <laughs> mom, but... <laughs> And they are so, both my husband and I, they're so erratically, both of us. I mean, it's just crazy how Katrina's like all me, but that her strengths are all her father. Kirsten looks like her dad, but she has like a, no Kirsten's her dad. Never mind. So, <laughs> so <laughs> those are like really, really, those are my, those are my happiest moments are my girls and literally man I, I tell you they are my they are the light of my life like they are my everything really um not not to compare to my relationship with my husband but those girls they make my life and that was a moment for me because i'm somebody's mom yo that's that blows me away that god would take the time to make me somebody's mom you know um When you, when you think that you have no worth, but yet he gives you children, that's that's incredible to me. Um, women, <laughs> just, just think about that fact, you know, when we have those gifts that are given to us, they are for purpose. Um, whether they be your sons or your daughters, they are for purpose. And so, yeah, that was my happiest moments when I had both of my daughters, I mean, Wow, I, still to this day, they are my happiest moments. It's every time I see those girls, my life is lit up because of them. So, um, yeah, it's just, that's, that's, that they are also my why. They are the reason why, you know, I want to make sure that how I live this life, that is a testament to them that they can say, you know, my mom did this, my mom did that, and I want to make sure that I am. Um, I'm living well because of her, you know, and, or my mom allowed me to have this life because of what she poured into me, you know, so, or what expression of love I gave to them, they can give to their children. So I want that to be able to go on. And it was a roller coaster ride for quite some time. Cause when you don't know who you are and you're trying to be a mom and be a wife and you don't know who you are and you're trying to make sure your daughters are good and you don't even really know that you're good so that's 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 a struggle um 
and his daughters man just think about if i had sons god help <laughs> and i'm you know I, I look at my sons that i have that god has given me spiritually and i still i cringe because I said, Lord, I just, you know, I'm an example to them as a mom still. And I just pray that the love that I give them, that they can hold on to that. So I have several sons and daughters in the spirit realm. I mean, in the spirit realm, but in the sp spiritual sons and daughters that, that call me mom. And I do not take that for granted. Not one day. I do not take that. And listen, I have failed <laughs> in so many areas of being a mom. It's not even funny, but... The gift of, of, of repentance, the gift of grace, the gift of mercy, the gift that, that I can say, forgive me, and they are able to receive it. Some did, some didn't. Sometimes my girls do, sometimes my girls don't. But they know that the love that I have is so genuine, they can't get past that. So somewhere or another, they might be mad at me, but they can expect a good hug, a kiss on the cheek, and then they might get a spanking at the end. So, <laughs> but they always know that love is going to be there with a hug and a kiss each and every time. So, um, yeah. So I would say that my end game is the love factor. That every time someone comes to me, no matter what, that they lead with love. That they will feel the generosity of my love towards them. Even in the times where there has to be a chastisement, that they will know that I'm saying it because I love them. Because I never knew what that meant. So when you leave from me, my main objective, always remember the end game is the love factor. What would I tell my 17 year old self? Everything's going to be okay. In the midst of it all, as crazy as it looks, everything is going to be okay. Don't get too anxious. Don't get overworked. Just remember, everything is going to be okay. I can get completely overwhelmed within certain situations, circumstances. I just recently had some 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 difficult heart issues not to the point where it was so bad but my blood pressure was fluctuating so I really had to think about that I just had to remind myself that everything is gonna be okay at 17 I had just had a miscarriage um, at the age of 16 so I was kind of reeling from that so yeah everything's gonna be okay and if I knew what I knew now, I would probably be able to tell her, hey, girl, God got a plan. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what I tell her. that's what I tell everybody now. That to the best of my ability, I try to remind them that God has a plan for your life. And, and his word really clearly states that all things work together for the good. So I know it's hard at times, 17-year-old Marie. I know you did not believe in yourself. But there's somebody out there that believes in you and is waiting for your voice. So just hang in there, girl. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. So when I finally decided to believe in me, it changed the whole entire perspective of my entire life. So I just want to encourage you that you are here for a reason, that you literally have a purpose. And if you don't believe it, look at me. I would have never thought that from the time that my mom told me she didn't want me or wouldn't have had me or that the volatile relationship that I watched my mother go through or everything that my husband and I went through, I would have never thought that this day would be where I am believing in myself. I walk in pure confidence in God. I am trusting and standing on his unchanging word. 
that I have decided to truly heal for the next part and seasons of my life so that I can bring others into that place. To know that as we are walking in our women, that we are walking in that position to bring others into the enlightenment of who we are and why we're here. And when we talk about things that we don't quite understand or we may have questions, I don't know, I think that I said something earlier about my podcast called The Deep Waters. I'm gonna ask you to tap in. I promise you, you're gonna get some questions answered. I I don't know, I, 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 I went to God about a couple of things and I said, God, what in the world? You know, I talked about some other things that I've got that I'm working on. But when I started talking about the deep waters, I never felt such a peace that I knew that this thing was of God. So I definitely want to suggest that you go and tap into the deep waters. You've always been living in the shallow end anyway. It's time to go ahead and tap, go, go, dig a little deeper, dive a little deeper into the deep waters. <laughs> go ahead and swim on out there, launch out into the deep. And, um, yeah, launch out into the deep. Believe in yourself. Believe you can do absolutely anything that you believe you can do. You can do all things through Christ. He strengthens you anyway. So you just as well go ahead and do it. Um, and I think that's it for me. I am Marie Cornell. I am from Berlin, Maryland. And I'm established now in Salisbury, Maryland. I am the founder of Walking in Your Woman, and I am purpose to make sure that women are encouraged to purposefully, unapologetically walk in their woman to the full. Thanks for coming by.